हेलो वेलकम डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह डी साइड टुडे इन यूनिट ट्वेंटी थ्री डब्ल्यू टी ओ जी ए टी टी जी ए टी एस कैपिटल एंड ह्यूमन फ्लोस वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर लेक्चर विद टॉपिक ट्रेड रिलेटेड एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट स्ट्रिप्स आइडियाज एंड नॉलेज अमर्जिंग आउट ऑफ रिसर्च इनोवेशन इन्वेंशन एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एडवांस्ड टेक्नोलॉजी आर इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द ट्रेड द डब्ल्यू टी ओ एग्रीमेंट ऑन ट्रेड रिलेशन एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इंटलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट स्ट्रिप्स एम्स टू ग्रांट द क्रिएटर्स द राइट टू प्रिवेंट अदर्स फ्रॉम यूजिंग देयर इन्वेंशंस designs or other creations and to use that right to negotiate payment in return for others using them disputes over intellectual property rights are settled based on certain basic principles some of them are mentioned below the first one is national treatment trading one's own national and foreigners equally and most favored nations equal treatment for all nations are the basic principle of trips it also stipulates that the intellectual property protection should contribute to technical innovation and transfer of technology the second is intellectual property rights trips has made elaborate arrangements to protect intellectual property it protects the copyright of producers of the intellectual property computer programs are protected as literary work similarly sound recordings films and the performers are given the rights to prevent the unauthorized use of one's production while service marks will be protected as trademarks well known trademarks will enjoy additional protection the third is patent protection according to the agreement patent protection must be available for inventions for at least 20 years patent protection is available both for products and processes in almost all fields of technology government however can refuse to issue a patent for an invention if its commercial exploitation affects public order or morality regarding plants it is said that the plant varieties must be protected and protectable by patents while the patent owners are given specific right to enjoy and to prevent the possible abuse of those rights the member governments are authorized to issue compulsory licenses allowing a competitor to produce the product or use the process under license by safeguarding the legitimate interest of the patent holder patent protection of pharmaceutical products at times prevents poor people of developing countries from having access to medicine the doha ministerial conference in november 2001 has agreed to grant exemptions on pharmaceutical patent protection for least developed countries until 2016 Developing countries see technology transfer as a part of a bargain in which they have agreed to protect intellectual property right. The TRIPS agreement requires the developed countries to provide incentives for their companies to transfer technology to least developed countries. Now let us move to the next point that is trade liberalization. the emerging concerns for developing countries in the following sections of this unit we shall be discussing the implications of wto agreements on the developmental concerns of the developing countries it has been assumed by a section of scholars 
that uh, trade liberalization in service can result in increased competition, lower prices, more innovation, technology transfer, employment generation, and greater transparency and predictability in trade and investment flows. Significantly, trade liberalization is also being seen as conducive to the realization of social, developmental, and equity issues. As indicated in the first section, the Social Development Summit 1995 at Copenhagen categorically mentioned that the social development could not be separated from the economic environment. An important section of scholars are of the view that the GATT and GATS would make a balance between market forces and public policies pertaining to the social and equity issues. However, questions are usually raised as a whether in the emerging environment of competitiveness, the concern for equity, public distribution, human development of marginalized and the sovereignty of the states in fulfilling their national social objectives will get proper attention and treatment. It is usually pointed out that in the areas of health and education there are recognized market failures and the states are involved as providers of such services in many areas. The lack of commitments in social services by the market forces only widen the scope of such concerns. Let us see some of them in little more detail. The first is WTO has emphasized uniformity of standards, rules and procedures which are to be adhered to by all the member governments within a specified time frame. The developing and least developed countries are given more time than the developed ones to formulate the norms, rules and economic policies to match the requirement of global uniformity. The fact is that their harmonizing tendency has emerged by undermining the diverse patterns of economy, localized needs and issues. At times the process of harmonization has prevailed over economic autonomy and political sovereignty of developing and least developed countries. The GATS agreement is comprehensive and applicable to all levels of the governments, central, state, provincial, local and municipal. It is apprehended that the GATS principle would carve the sovereignty of the state, minimize the national interest and ignore universal service obligations. It also is also said that the agreement for the development of discipline in the accountancy sector by the WTO's working party on the professional services and its possible extension to other services like health and legal areas would undermine the government's authority to regulate consumer protection ethical conduct and professional integrity. It is alleged WTO has been formed under the protected influence of the West to safeguard the interests of the multinational companies MNC of the developed nations, especially those of North America. It is again said that the MNCs have a bigger say in the trade negotiations than sovereign states of the developing and least developed countries. Due to the pressure from the lobbies in developed countries, GHS would 
force the developing and the least developed country to open their services sector to trade leading to a corporate takeover of the domestic service sector by the multinationals such a takeover would undermine government's commitment to equity universal service obligations and consumer protection now the third point is wto has introduced market driven competition among unequal partners the developing and least developed countries who are yet to fully develop their markets infrastructure domestic capacity for investment etc will face added advantages while encountering the process of harmonization this process will reduce the possibility of the potential entry of these countries in competitive markets again the increasing emphasis on labor and environmental standards has put the serious trade restrictions on these countries the problems of unemployment poverty and illiteracy which are endemic in these countries are being determined in the process of harmonization the gats negotiation would serve the export interest of the developed countries under the given situation and developed and developing and least developed countries are unevenly placed so far as the supply capacity in service is concerned the critics note that the present asymmetry and the bias in the market access commitment towards capital mobility as opposed to labor mobility works in the interest of the developed rather than developing countries it reflects a basic imbalance in negotiating position and lobbying power between the two sides It is pointed out that GATS would not take into consideration the export interest of the developing countries especially the cross border mobility of labor the commitment to mode 4 are highly biased towards the higher levels of service providers such as executive managers and corporate transferees whose movements are usually linked to commercial presence There is considerable asymmetry in the current commitments on labor mobility compared to those on capital mobility with more liberal commitments being made on foreign equity participation such as asymmetry in mode wa- wide commitments is one of the reasons why many countries do not see GATS as helping them to top their export potential in labor based services and why gats has been perceived as only in the interest of the developed countries in service sector of economies including both the traditional venture like transport physical and telecommunication tourism and emerging areas like information and communication technology and environmental and educational service have been undergoing phenomenal expansion all over the globe in recent years in the developed countries like uk and the usa it constitutes more than 72% and in the developing countries like india it is 52% of the gdp This sector also provides a similar proportion of employment to the workforce of these countries. Again, there has been considerable expansion in service sector trade and investment flows. According to WTO annual report 1999 to 2001, the service sector accounts for 40% of the global annual stock of foreign direct investment. FDI and for 50% of the world annual FDI flows 
it is a fact that the developed countries have an exceptionally higher share in fdi in service sector than the developing and least developed countries trade liberalization in services as initiated through the urgwe round was largely due to the pressure from the service sector lobby in the developed countries it is also felt that since one of the modes of supply is commercial presence gats would be a means for commercial interest in the developed countries to access developing countries service markets in areas such as service banking and telecommunication through foreign direct investment in the emerging global scenario experts are of the view that in the service sector like construction and engineering health and education service the developing countries have considerable export potential due mainly to the availability of skilled and abundant labor for example india has already emerged at the leading exporter of software services and trained human resources in ict there are some ambiguities in the scope and coverage of the range of the services covered by the gats at times it is said that the services provided in the exercise of government authority are excluded fr- from the agreement again it is said that the services which are not supplied on a commercial or competitive basis are excluded from gats as there is coexistence of private and government suppliers in many of the crucial services these are amenable to diverse interpretations gats has imposed restrictions on the issue of subsidy government procurement policy etc such restrictions it is alleged would be adverse effect on the cost availability and equitable distribution of services here we want to close this lecture thanks for listening